What's going on everybody out there in the Frontline Universe? Your Dark Avenger Chris here and welcome back to another comic book review. As Marvel Legacy roars forward and continues, we here on Comic Frontline continue our non-stop coverage of Marvel Legacy. And in this video, I'll be reviewing Invincible Iron Man issue 593. So close to 600. It's going to be amazing when this book hit, hits 600. But anyway, we're in 593. And before we get into issue 593, i got to give you guys the two things I always give you. Number one, preview artwork from inside the issue. And number two, spoiler alert warning. After my non-spoiler overview, which I like to do in all of my reviews, in case you didn't pick up the book or you're on the fence, you can get an idea of the book without any spoilers. But after that... I will be going in depth with issue 593 of Invincible Iron Man. I really am excited to talk about this book, actually. Um, so if you don't want spoilers, if you haven't read the book yet, take this video after the non-spoiler overview, pause it, put in your watch later file, come back later, and let's see if we agree on opinions with Invincible Iron Man. So here we go. Invincible Iron Man issue 593. As you guys know, um, after the events of Civil War, when Tony Stark went into his coma and Invincible Iron Man started up again, starring... Riri Williams, a.k.a. Iron Heart, uh, I got into one or two issues. I got into the first two issues about, and I wasn't interested in the series. The series didn't hold me. I wasn't really interested. I had been reading Iron Man right along. I read Superior Iron Man. I was reading Invincible Iron Man, several other Iron Man. This book, if it was titled Iron Heart when it first came out after Civil War, it would have been honest, number one. Number two, it would have made a different kind of impact. Even in the book, Riri Williams was always referred to as Iron Heart. She created Iron Heart. So my issue was, while it was continuing in the Iron Man part of the Marvel Universe, the book could have been titled Iron Heart. It would have gotten a lot better, a lot warmer of a welcome, so to speak. But for me, the book wasn't for me, so I didn't read it. But last issue, before the Marvel Legacy renumbering, Tony Stark went missing. So here we are in issue 593, and the search for Tony Stark begins here. Now, this book takes place, now, as you guys know, it, in the end of the last issue, Friday was telling the group that Tony went missing. This book starts off a little bit before Tony Stark goes missing, and then continues on after the final scene of the last issue. This book was enjoyable. I enjoyed the artwork in it. I liked specific scenes in this book. You have the um, you have Doctor Doom, Iron Man, who makes a guest appearance in this book. You have other characters that guest appear in this book. It was a lot of fun, and this book kind of felt like a bit of a setup, though. It was an enjoyable setup, but it was very mm, what's the word I'm looking for? There was a lot of disposition. It was a lot of setup, a lot of talking. Uh, some things go on with uh, Stark Industries and Mary Jane and, and Tony's mom. So, honestly, I enjoyed it. It's a great setup for the search of Tony Stark. You know, we all know that he was in this induced coma for no reason. There was no reason why he should be in this coma. He's completely 100% fine, yet there he is, out cold, not waking up. Even Friday is kind of frustrated by it. But then you have Doctor Doom who took up the Iron Man um, name. You have Ironheart who took over for Tony for the past year and a half so now he's missing and it's up to the team to find him and that's really the idea of what's surrounding this book uh, this is the not the best non-spoiler overview I can give you guys and you'd understand uh, if you've read the book you'll understand especially when we get into the spoilers of the book but that's the best non-spoiler overview I can give you I enjoyed this book I give it a three and a half to four out of five stars. Obviously, I'm going to be continuing Invincible Iron Man. I want to see where the search for Tony Stark leads. What I would like, what I truly and honestly would like, if Tony does come back after this search, if they find him, he's awake, and he becomes Iron Man again, I would truly love to see Ironheart spin off into her own uh, full-fledged ongoing series. Like, keep Riri around. Give her an Ironheart series, but give Tony back Invincible Iron Man and obviously Doctor Doom... I don't know what you'll do with him as Iron Man, but maybe ship him off. So it would be cool to have that going on. So basically, Ironheart would take over the Doctor Doom Iron Man book, and Tony would take over in his book again. That would be my... That would be a good idea. I mean, again, this is what I would like to see happen. Will it happen? Obviously, we'll have to wait and find out. But now, that's the non-spoiler overview. I like the artwork. The story definitely got me interested in the search for Tony Stark. And the ending to this issue... Without giving any spoilers away, the last couple of pages of this issue definitely leave you with a, whoa, what's going on here kind of moment. 
And that's the best non-spoiler overview I can give you guys for this book. And you'll understand as we get into the spoilers, which is going to start now. So, Invincible Iron Man issue 593. It opens up with MJ and Tony's biological mother at the science event that Stark Industries always... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Always hosts. And uh, the mother is making a speech. MJ's in the background watching. And that's when the the head of the board of directors shows up in front of M er, MJ and basically says her and the mother are being ousted, that the company is going to be taken over by the, bo the, the board of directors instead because a lot of money is going missing because of all the stuff going on with Stark Industries. So long story short, they're out. The board is taking over Stark Industries. Goodbye. Thanks for your help. We don't need you anymore. And apparently there's going to be an investigation for where all the money for St from Stark Industries has been disappearing to. That's the nice part of this issue. Because then in the next part, Tony's gone missing and Friday's talking about, you know, he went missing. We don't know where he went. His chips are turned off. They don't know who took him, where he went, why he disappeared. And then you have a, a small cutscene in between all that's going on. And you have Doctor Doom, who's cleaning up after the events of Secret Empire, because this takes place after Secret Empire, and the world is still scared of him as Iron Man, and I'm sure anyone who's been reading the Doctor Doom Iron Man, I've not, I've not, I really truly was never interested in the Doctor Doom Iron Man ongoing, so you guys can fill me in on this part, but Ben Grimm is, uh, is following him, it was a S.H.I.E.L.D. order, S.H.I.E.L.D. is disbanded now, but Ben is still shadowing Doctor Doom, because Ben still says, you know, no matter what you do, because Dr. Doom's like, when are you going to stop shadowing me? When are you going to realize I'm trying to make up for all the sins I had? And Ben kind of gives Doc a very harsh reality check saying, everything you've done, everybody you've hurt, everybody you, all the events and things that you've caused over the years, it's too late for you. Redemption is not in your blood anymore. The world will never accept you. And even if they do you're still a monster for all the things you had. He said you had multiple opportunities, like Reed, to really fix things, and you never took them. And now, all of a sudden, you want redemption. That's not going to happen. The world is never going to forgive you for everything you've done. And that's the long and short of it. I like Ben's little disposition. And he just disappears. Doc Doom disappears. Then we go back to Friday, and they're trying to figure out how or who to call to find Tony Stark. S.H.I.E.L.D. is disbanded. All the Avengers are dealing with other problems. So who's left? And actually, I like how Friday kind of recommends Doctor Doom. And then we get a final scene in the book where somebody wakes up somewhere in Stark armories, bald, no, no hair whatsoever. So you don't know who this person is, but he goes for the Iron Man armor, grabs it, puts it on, and he's just in the fetal position. And that's where... The book ends. Is it Tony? Is it somebody else? Who is this person that's in Tony's lab, basically? And it's interesting. And I'm wondering now, when Tony was in the coma at the beginning of the book, he had long hair, his you know, he had a full beard and everything. Did somebody kidnap Tony and try to bring him back to life? And that's Tony just completely hairless? Or is this somebody else that was in that Tony had or who is this person? And it, it, it leaves you at a really strong cliffhanger to the point where I am really eager to get the next issue of Invincible Iron Man to find out who this person is. Is it Tony? Is it somebody else? If it's not Tony, where is Tony? Who has Tony? My prediction is possibility that it's Doctor Doom, especially after the, the, the scene we got with Ben Grimm and Doctor Doom. You wonder where you know. You wonder if Doctor Doom might take Tony in order to make sure that he never wakes up, so Doctor Doom can continue to be Iron Man, or to try to wake Tony up. We don't know, but I, my prediction is Doctor Doom. I don't really know many other people that would take Tony. It, Friday did give the option. Maybe Tony woke up on his own and disappeared. That's a possibility as well. Where is Tony Stark? And I like... This story arc has me very interested to see what is Riri going to do? What is MJ going to do? What's Tony's mom going to do? What's Friday going to do now that Tony's missing? One thing that I kind of felt like in that scene it should have been was Tony's AI. Lacking in that scene. It was in the scene where they were at the Science Expo, but completely not in the scene where Friday and the others are talking about where Tony could be. Just... Just... Uh, query on why he wasn't there. Maybe in the beginning of the next book he will be there. 
I don't know. This was a fun book. Three and a half to four out of five stars. I enjoyed it. The artwork was great. The story definitely has me interested in seeing this journey on where, you know, to find Tony Stark, if they even find Tony Stark, and what's next for the Invincible Iron Man series. Like I said, dream scenario. They find Tony. He's alive and well. He's doing good. Takes up the mantle of Invincible Iron Man again. Riri goes off into her own book. Figure around February, March. You get Ironheart issue number one out of Marvel Legacy, one of the newer books that haven't been announced yet because obviously Marvel Legacy is going to be going at least until February, March because already they're going to December. Figure newer books will be coming out at the beginning of next year. You announce Ironheart. You cancel uh, the Doctor Doom Iron Man book. Boom. You get a good team for Ironheart. Maybe put Bendis on Ironheart. Get another writer for Invincible Iron Man. I think you're you're pretty set. Will this happen? We'll have to wait and find out. Personally, I do hope it happens. I really would like to see Tony back as Iron Man. And I'd like to see Ironheart prosper on her own. The only weird thing would be if Tony's alive and Ironheart has Tony's AI, that might be a bit creepy. Although Friday could join um, Ironheart. Who knows? Again, this is all spitballing. None of this could happen. <clears throat> I am literally sitting here making predictions on what I'd like to see happen. What will happen, that's up to Marvel. But I definitely will be sticking around for this story arc to see what happens. I'm very curious. And I will say Bendis did a really excellent job leaving us on a really strong cliffhanger with this issue. And he left us on a strong cliffhanger with the last issue, which was the end of that volume. And now we're back with the Marvel Legacy numbering. But this series just took a notch up. I'm very excited to see what happens next. And with that, that's it for my review, guys. What did you guys think of Invincible Iron Man? Did you jump back on the series after seeing this? Did you? Are you interested in seeing if Tony's coming back? Are you still not reading the book? Do you not care about Iron Man? Let us know in the comments below because we love to hear from you guys. And if you're new to this channel, hopefully you'll smash that sub button down below. This way we're in your sub box. You don't miss out on a single video. We have at least three live shows every single week unless something happens. We have Frontline Live, Media Madness, Dark Avenger Live. Those are our main live shows. And then we have a bunch of co comic reviews. We will be covering Marvel Legacy. All the first issues definitely coming out of Marvel Legacy after that. It all depends on where we go, but we will be covering every first issue coming out of Marvel Legacy as the weeks move forward. And um, after that, we'll see where things go. Marvel Legacy, DC Rebirth, we've got a lot of things coming up soon. So look forward to that. And until next time, everybody, take care, keep reading, keep collecting, and I'll see you guys really soon in the next video.